Hey guys, Pogosick29 here. Welcome to episode number one of my Bucket Paintball Coding mini-series. Just yesterday, I reached 500 subscribers. And in honor of that, I promised that I would make a Paintball Coding mini-series. So here's the first episode. In this episode, I'm going to see teach you guys about uh, how to make arenas, basically... Um, saving and loading arena data and allowing for players to join and leave the arenas. Uh, this will not be commands, but uh, this is basically an introduction to game structure. Um, once the miniseries is done, you will have a nice paintball plugin that you can, you know, use for yourself. And uh, it will also teach you about game structure, so you can take what you learned from this and apply it to any mini game you want to make. So I'm using the same workspace as all the other coding tutorials because this is just one project and it is still a bucket plugin coding tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new project and we're going to be we're going to go ahead and call it I'm gonna call mine Pogo Ball. Just to be more unique. And just plain paintball. You guys can call it whatever you want. Then let's go ahead and give it the package me.pogosic29dev.pogoball. And yes, I am using pogosic29dev. I usually use pogosic29, but I figure use the name of my channel. And then we'll go ahead and make our main pogoball class. We need to add craft bucket or bucket to our build path, and then this class will extend java plugin. Uh, we'll come back to this soon, a little bit later, but for now, we're going to learn how to make arenas. Um, basically, um, with most mini games, pretty much all mini games, you're going to want to have multiple arenas. If you just had one game and the game was full, then people would be forced to wait until it was over, and that's not really what you want. So, um, this paintball plugin will come with support for as many arenas as you want. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is make in a class called Arena. Now, the Arena class is essentially a wrapper class. It contains all of the data that th this Arena class represents one arena of this game. And it contains information about the arena, as well as ways to get it, set it, and other methods that pertain to the arena, like adding players, removing players, um, you know, different methods, you know, checking if a player is in the arena, different things like that. Now, for the purposes of uh, paintball, or pogo ball, every arena is going to be classified by a number. The number, I believe, starts with 1 and continues on from that. So, what we're going to want to do is, we're going to want to make, we're going to say public arena int id. And now, this arena, this, what's going to happen is, uh, very soon we're going to make an arena manager class. And what this will do is, it will allow you to get arenas based on, you know, you can pass different arguments, and it will give you, it will return an instance of the arena class. So, we're going to go ahead, and we want to store all of our data. So, we're going to make a private int id. Um, what else does an arena have? It'll have a private location, red spawn, and blue spawn. Because um, we're going to have two different, um, you know, there will be each game will have two different teams. I'm going with red and blue. You can call them whatever you want. Then we're also going to have a um, private hash map. And this is going to take a string and a team, it's going to be called get player. Uh, sorry, it's going to be called um, players equals new hash map string, comma, team. Now, this will store the, um, sorry, remove scoreboard team import. This is going to store 
the a player's name and the team that they're on. Now you notice that we don't have a team uh, class or whatever, and that's because we're going to be using an enumerator, and we're going to make that soon. Now, within here, this is going to be the setup, and once we make the, uh, in one of these videos, we're going to do the configuration, uh, you know, the saving and loading of everything, and then the configuration will come in, um, because the way that we store the arena data is all of the data is stored by the arena's ID. So the setup will go in there. Then we're going to have a few different things. Public int get ID, return ID, public location get spawn, team team. And you know, basically this will return the spawn for whatever team you you know, whatever team you want. And uh, I'm not. I don't know if I've ever done this uh, switch uh, and case statement, but it's a good thing to know. So I'll show you guys right now. So you're gonna go ahead and type switch team. So you have your variable which is team, and then we're going to say case red, return red spawn, and then write break. Case blue, return blue spawn. Oh, I no, in this case you don't need the break. And then you're going to write default return null. Now, what a switch statement, switching case statement is is your instead of doing a bunch of ifs like if team equals team red, then return else if team equals blue. Um we're switching the team and we're saying case red. So if the team is red, then return red spawn. If it's blue, return blue spawn. If it's neither, in which case, I guess that wouldn't really be possible. But if for whatever reason, in this case, in this case, it's not possible. But uh, if you were, you know, switching some variable that did not, and you know, this one of these cases wasn't an option, the default would do would be the backup plan. Um, and usually, if you don't have return, you need to add you need to add break. In this case, um, we have the return because. Um, it's, you know, when it returns, it stops the code, but if you're just, uh, using this to, you know, set or check a value, whatever you're doing, um, you need to add break or else it will automatically go and do whatever is in default. I don't really know why, but that's just how it is. The next thing we're going to want to do is say public team get team for player P, and we'll say return players dot get for P dot get name. So that will return the team that corresponds with the player. And if this and if you get this org.bucket.scoreboard.team import, you can feel free to delete it because it is not it's not like that's not the team that we're gonna be using. Then we're gonna go ahead and want to do public void add player player p. And uh hang on one second. So the add player method will add the players to the team, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually write a method that will add the player based on, like, so if there are more people on the red team, it'll put them on the blue team, so it'll evenly add the different people. And I think we could probably do that right now. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, this is going to be a private team, get team with less players. Why not? And then we're going to go ahead and say um, private int red comma blue. And then we're going to say for string p name or string p players. So we're going through every um, sorry, it's players dot uh, key set. So we're going through every ugh, keeps importing team. Basically, we're going through um, and take out private. We're going through every player that's registered, and then we're going to go ahead and say we're going to use another um, switch. Actually, no, we're going to add a method. A oh no, we already have our get team method. So we're going to say um, if get team. 
no, I'm sorry, we'll just do this differently. If we'll just say if players dot get for p equals team dot red, then we can say red plus plus else blue plus plus. So what we're saying, so we're keeping account of um, which, so every time, so we're going through every player that's registered, and if the player is on the red team, then we add one to the red, and then, and then yeah, else we add one to the blue. Then we can finally say, if red is greater than blue, return blue, or sorry, return team.blue. So if there are more red people, return the blue team, else return team.red. And then we can go ahead and say players.put p comma get team with less players and that should work all right now for now that is all we're going to do in the arena we're going we'll, we'll we will add more methods and and values to the arena later but um i'm going to go ahead and make the arena manager class and now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the uh, team enum, which we'll fix our enumerator. Public enum team. And it will say red, comma, blue. Now I'm declaring the um, enumerator inside of the class because I can, and I don't want to have another, um, I don't want to have another, you know, team. I don't want to have another Java file just for that. So now you can go ahead, and now when you do it, it will ask you which team you want to use, and we want to use our enumerator. And as you can see, that should now, let's see what's wrong, oh yes, p.getName, and it also, I believe, yes, not initialized team, okay, red is zero, and blue is zero. And that should fix all the problems with arena. Now in the arena manager, we're going to have a private arena manager and I'll explain what I'm doing in just a second and now a private static arena manager instance sorry equals new arena manager then we're going to have our public static arena manager get instance and return instance now what this is this is called singleton um, for a class and what that means is when I put this private arena manager, that means I cannot instantiate the class. I cannot get another instance of the class outside of the class itself. Usually when you do your coding, you just write like, um, like if you have a like separate class for listeners, you write, um, you know, I'm, maybe I have an example of this somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure, but you would write like, um, like when you go to register the, the listener, you would say new listeners. And that's creating a new instance. In this case, we want the same instance for everything because we're going to store all of the arenas. And if you make a new arena manager, then you'll get a new array list of arenas, and then the arenas won't be the same, and it's a big mess. So what we're doing is we're making the class so that no one can make a new instance of it other than this class. Then we're making an instance of it. Then we're making a way to get the instance, and this method is static because when you want to call it, you call arena manager dot get instance dot method, whatever method you want to do, and that's how this works. And we're going to do this for most of the classes, not the listeners and not the commands, but for um, settings and a few other things. This is what we're going to uh, use, and I think we did. I think I did talk about this in the settings manager video. So now we're going to go ahead and make a public void setup. And this is where we're going to load the configuration. We also need a private um, array list team, uh, sorry, arena, arenas equals new array list arena. And it's, ar it's arena, not arenas. And import array list and arena. So this will contain all of the different arenas. In the setup, we will go through the configuration and add the arenas to the array list by getting them from the configuration. Then we just need a few more uh, methods, public arena 
get arena int id. So if you give this method an id, it will get the arena that you want. So we can go ahead and say for arena a arenas if a dot get id equals id return a return null. So we're uh, looping through, we're iterating through all of the arenas, and if that arena's ID is equal to the given ID, we're returning that arena. Otherwise, we're returning null. The last method we're going to want to do is public arena get arena player p. So this will give you the, the ability to get an arena by giving it a player. So it'll return the arena that the player's in. So we're going to go ahead and do something very similar for arena a arenas if sorry it's arena a arenas if a dot and we actually need another method we need this um we need our um when all right right here we'll say public boolean contains player player p then we want to say if players dot keyset dot contains p dot get name or no, sorry, we can just say return. So if the um so if the uh if if the list of players contains the given player, return true, otherwise return false. So then we can say if a dot contains sorry, if a dot contains player p, return a, otherwise return null. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to do is in our pogo ball in our main class on our public void on enable, we're going to call sorry um, arena manager dot get instance dot um, setup sorry dot set up. And now what this will do is it will um, hang on one second. What that will do is it will allow you, it will set up the arena manager, and right now that doesn't do anything, but when we do the coding for that, that will load all of the arenas. So that is all for this first uh, introduction video. Uh, this should have taught you um, base introduction to arena structure with uh, uh, yeah arena structure uh, with making the arena wrapper class and the arena manager to access it. Um, we're going to continue on with this series. It'll probably take about I don't know ten videos, and then in the end, you'll, you guys will have a nice um, you guys will have a nice uh, paintball plugin. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you have any feature requests for the paintball plugin or any requests for regular bucket plugin coding tutorials, feel free to comment them. Thanks again for the uh, for all the support. Can you guys believe it? I've, I'm already up to, I believe, 520 subscribers last night. 522. This is one day ago, I hit 500 subscribers, and one day later, I'm up to 522. So that is, that is just amazing, and it really won't take too long to reach the next big milestone, which is 1,000. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I hope you enjoy the videos, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Goodbye.